I think for good reason there's been an emphasis on concussion and there's been an emphasis on the big hits that everybody notices. What our study indicates is that that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are all of the other hits that players sustain in the course of playing a typical game of football without concussion and all of those sub-concussive hits seem to add up to cause damage to the brain that we can measure with MRI. The twisting aspect of the force is what is more correlated with the changes that we are observing in these players versus the direct hits. It makes sense because this part of the brain has what we call biomechanical susceptibility because it's really narrower. Now you have this big dome sitting on a very narrow cone and that predisposes it to twisting. The brain accumulates a whole variety of toxic like poisonous proteins. When those nerve cells break after each head hit, it's almost like garbage builds up in the brain. And there's a, the brain has a system for getting rid of that. But if it's overwhelmed because it's getting hit 70, 80, 90 times a day, those proteins just build up. Going forward, if we want to develop metrics to be able to document and predict the injury burden of contact sports in the absence of concussion, we believe that this part of the brain, the midbrain, is the place to look.